I think museums in general are institutions that have an awful lot of work to do in terms of trust building and relationship building. Decolonization is absolutely a focus. I think how can it not be when we are the Canadian Museum for Human Rights? Uh, that's the work that we're doing with elders alongside communities to, to speak our truth and to speak the truth uh, and inspire others and educate others about the story of our country. So here is the statue, which after approximately one century, a hundred years, will be returning home to India. Uh, we are likely to, uh, to see further repatriation efforts needed. Decolonizing museums is something we've looked at previously on Investigates. It's the idea of correcting the bias of the colonial lens, the lens that has tended to see cultures other than white ones as just that, other. It's a big idea that has museums across Canada and around the world taking a hard look at what they've been. And it's impacting how museums will be operated moving forward. But decolonizing museums isn't just about changing the way museums look at things. It's also very much about retrieving possessions that were taken. Yeah, my name is uh, Hereditary Chief uh, It means break the silver daylight. And my family comes from, that name comes from a place called South Bendik in the Nukok territory. And our family were the last people out of there in the 1930s. Snooki Altwa is also known as Derek Snow. The chief is trying to get the Royal British Columbia Museum to return a totem pole he says belongs to his family. It was carved by his great-grandfather, Louis Snow. And he says it isn't meant to be carefully preserved in the sterile confines of a museum. You know, our traditions, things um, weren't meant to, meant to be standing 100, 150 years. You know, um, our bodies, it goes back into the, disposes back into the ground. Same with the totem poles that go there. Um, they were supposed to naturally fall on top of the gravesite. And um, I don't know exactly what the museum has done to these totem poles to make them stand so long, but it's against our traditional law for them to be, for them to be doing that. As he sees it, there's a living spirit in that pole, and what happened to it is a lot like what happened to his people. It's just the same thing as us. They put us in reservations, or rancheries, as they call them, and they put our, put our ancestors in the Royal Museum. It's basically the same, exact same thing. And um, our people always have, have taken care of, 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 our, um, of our ancestors. In 2019, he felt a calling to make a trip to the museum. I, I myself um, was sent there spiritually. I woke up one day and I told my family that I, we had to go to Victoria. And I don't know what we got to go to Victoria for, but I think it's a totem pole. And we, we um, wrote a letter and got the um, chief of council to sign. And so he visited the museum with a delegation to deliver a letter asking that the poll be returned. We've got a letter here. I think I'll read it out loud to everybody here if I can see. We ask for our totem pole and our great grandfather's uh, carvings that they hold in their possession. And it went well because then CEO Jack Lohman spoke in favor of giving it back. I recognize as the leader of this museum that this pole needs to return back to its territory, that these treasures need to return back to their territories. 
and I'm delighted to assist you in the return of this magnificent hole by Louis Stiller. The hope is to put the pole on display for a period in his community, at the school in Bella Coola. And then eventually he wants it returned to his community's original location, where it will be left to weather the elements. However, the current situation is that Jack Lohman is no longer CEO, and the pole hasn't been returned. Jack Lohman promised, um, probably went with him as he left the <laughs> Royal Museum, I think, and we even offered to pay for it ourselves, you know. Um, we said we can pay for it ourselves, if that's a problem, just get it to the door and we'll go pick it up ourselves. And right now, nobody can get a good look at the totem pole, because the Royal BC Museum has closed the third floor where Louis Snow's pole resides. And so to try to light a fire under them, Derek Snow has filed a civil claim against the museum in BC's Supreme Court. The Royal BC Museum told APTN Investigates they cannot comment as it is an active legal issue. The provincial minister responsible for the museum says as far as she's concerned, Loman's pledge to return Louis Snow's totem pole still stands. Melanie Mark is Minister of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport, as well as the first First Nations woman appointed to cabinet in BC. I was given every confidence that the former CEO Jack Lohman did commit to giving, uh, to returning that poll, and that has never changed. But it's not as easy as just taking a poll out of a building and th it, it, that transaction. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that, again, with protocol and making sure that we work with community, which we are doing. The commitment will remain that, that we do return the poll. How we do that, I think, is just a little bit more. Uh, there's, there's just more consideration that has to go into the logistics of, of transporting a poll, but we will definitely be working with the nations and, and hope to have some resolution sooner than later. Not only that, Mark says there's more repatriation or giving back of possessions coming. I would say we're going to do more. We're going to do it with the, with the spirit of reconciliation at the center and self-determination at the center to be led by the nation. So that principle of nothing about us without us is, is how we're gonna carry forward uh, the work on repatriation. But I'm very excited about that work. Mark has taken an interest in the museum, publishing an opinion piece about a planned overhaul that has now closed down the part of the museum where Louis Snow's totem pole is kept. The shutdown of that section of the museum was initially tied to decolonization plans in a statement from then acting CEO Daniel Musica, which may not have helped quell the uproar over the impending destruction of a beloved Old Town exhibit portraying the early days of colonization. But Mark says she can see the Royal BC Museum from her office window and thinks about it every day, and she thinks the closing of the third floor was overdue. We did close the third floor. It was not an easy decision. I recognize that, that it did, um, it was upsetting for a lot of people because I know that for a lot of families, it's the place that they go. Uh, it's got great memories, but we also have a duty to ensure that, that all of our history is reflected and, and the floor do wasn't doing that. The third floor was not uh, meeting that standard, that principle of nothing about us without us. And uh, we had some work to do. But the revamp of the museum isn't just about viewing history with a lens that allows for non-Eurocentric perspective. Some of the exhibits had asbestos, and, and we have a duty to make sure that we, we bring buildings up to code. There are also concerns about seismic safety and risk of flooding. Government was told back in 2010 to take action because our most precious archives, all of our history, are behind those walls. However, it's debatable whether the museum's worst troubles are physical ones or more related to a changing internal culture, a culture that is supposed to be fostering a decolonized approach among those working there. I think it's important. I think it takes a lot of courage to speak up. I think it takes a lot of courage to share your truth. And as a government, we couldn't ignore, uh, we couldn't ignore what, what was being shared. 
Minister Mark is talking about what happened with a former head of the Indigenous Collections and Repatriation Department. More on that ahead. When I took the job, I was told that the museum was supportive of people furthering their education and that I would be supported in uh, pursuing my PhD. And that really was something that I was really excited about. And some people, I think, didn't, were not as supportive. My name is Lucy Bell Stokkalas and I come from the Haida Nation. I was the inaugural head of the Indigenous Collections and Repatriation Department at the Royal BC Museum for about three and a half years. Lucy Bell resigned from her position at the Royal British Columbia Museum in the summer of 2020. And when Bell resigned, she did so in a dramatic fashion. I'm going to rip the bandaid off, and I hope that you have the patience, the love, and the understanding to just, just sit with me and listen. Making a parting speech wherein she outlined her grievances. I don't think they knew what I was going to say, but I felt, I could feel, feel it kind of bubbling up in me, and I just really felt like, I needed to address it and I needed to speak my own truth. So I just, in my speech, you know, I, I thanked my colleagues for my, my learning, for the experience, but I also spoke to some of the examples um, where I was really hurt in, in my job. Bell says the final straw prompting her decision to leave happened during an anti-racism meeting. She says the meeting was organized by well-meaning museum employees in response to the Black Lives Matter movement and protests in support of Wet'suwet'en land rights. At the meeting, someone said something that left her stunned. We were all asked some questions, and one of them was, when did you realize you were different than other people? And one talked about Native people uh, needing to ask white people to buy their booze, to stand outside the liquor store and ask white people to buy their booze because they weren't allowed in the liquor store. And I, I th it really felt inappropriate, it was wrong, it was hurtful, um, and I felt like I was the only one in my group that was shocked that he would use that as his example. Um, and. I went and to the boss and told him about the situation um, and nothing was done about it. And that was when I decided that for my own well-being, for my own safety, for my, for my health, that I couldn't do this anymore. Another factor in her decision to quit was the lack of support she felt she was getting while pursuing her PhD at Simon Fraser University, which is where APTN Investigates interviewed her. When I took the job, I was told that the museum was supportive of people furthering their education and that I would be supported in uh, pursuing my PhD. And that really was something that I was really excited about. But that story didn't have a happy ending. And some people, I think, didn't, were not as supportive. And uh, I was um, told to either quit my PhD or take a demotion if I wanted to continue my PhD. It really pissed me off. As an indigenous woman, I have a right to my education 
I have to show my daughter how to navigate this world and that, that she can navigate and walk in the Haida world and in the academic world. I barely asked my employer for anything but a bit of time off, a little bit of money for me to catch the ferry um, because I had a lot of, of sponsorship and my community was supporting me. And so Belle decided to leave her job. And that triggered an investigation. And others have since left their jobs as well. Well, my speaking out has led to an investigation. It's led to the museum hiring a d diversity expert. Um, it's led to many people being asked to take early retirement, um, being asked to um, go on leave um, until the investigation is done. I wish it didn't have to come to this. I wish that, that I was working in a place where I was respected and where Indigenous people and other people of color were truly respected. Um, I didn't expect to see all of this, but sometimes that's what needs to happen. And I, I, I have to raise my hands up to the board for taking the time to listen to me, um, for taking this seriously. I hope other museums um, follow suit and do do the work. The investigation was written about in a report published by the museum in the summer of 2021. In that report, Lucy Bell's resignation was called a watershed moment for the museum. Racism and discrimination was confirmed to have occurred, and the museum called itself out for not applying the articles of UNDRIP, or the TRC calls to action, sufficiently which is something Lucy Bell spoke of. Decolonizing museums should not be left to the handful of Indigenous people that work in museums. It's, it's like it's piled on, do my job, and then decolonize the museum as well. It's got to be the whole institution. It has to be the people who think it's not their job. They have to step up and do that as well. It means honoring UNDRIP, knowing what UNDRIP is, and responding to the calls to the TRC. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, or UNDRIP, and the Truth and Reconciliation Report are two major reasons why museum decolonization is on the radar of pretty much every museum in the country. Articles of UNDRIP relevant to museums wanting to decolonize include Article 12.2, which reads, States shall seek to enable the access and or repatriation of ceremonial objects and human remains in their possession through fair, transparent, and effective mechanisms developed in conjunction with Indigenous peoples concerned. And also Article 15.1, which reads, Indigenous peoples have the right to the dignity and diversity of their cultures, traditions, histories, and aspirations, which shall be appropriately reflected in education and public information. And the Truth and Reconciliation Commission reinforced UNDRIP in its calls to action, notably in Call 67, which reads, we call upon the federal government to provide funding to the Canadian Museums Association to undertake, in collaboration with Aboriginal peoples, a national review of museum policies and best practices to determine the level of compliance with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and to make recommendations. Repatriation of ceremonial objects and human remains has been a focus of Lucy Bell's career. I helped my Haida community bring home over 500 of my ancestors and we, we traveled the world looking for our ancestors um, and it took, took over 20 years, well over a million dollars of our own money 
to bring home our ancestors. And Belle found her passion for repatriation early in her career when she was interning at the Royal BC Museum. I could hear, like, sounded like children playing in the in the stairwell, and I I knew that those were ancestors, um, the spirits of ancestors, connecting with me. Belle learned that remains of her ancestors, children included were being kept in museums around the world. And she decided to do something about it. I thought I could just get chief and council to take care of it. I could just go and deliver them the news and give them some papers and, and they'll take care of it. Um, but at, at the time I, I was surrounded um, by my late mother and all of these wonderful nannies, the grandmothers. And you know, for people at this big meeting, were kept saying, you're the one, and that I had to, I had to bring our ancestors home. So I didn't really expect that. And as a young, naive girl, I was, you know, I went home and I cried for a few days. I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. But my mom and my, my nannies, the grandmothers, they kept reminding me that, that I can do this and that I'm not alone and that we'll find a way for the Haida community to bring home our ancestors. And we did. Currently, Bell is waiting to hear what is going to happen with a complaint she's filed with the BC Human Rights Tribunal about her experiences working at the museum. As APTN Investigates was wrapping production on this episode, the BC government announced a $789 million investment to build a new seismically safe museum on the site of the old one. At the announcement, APTN Investigates dialed in with a question about Louis Snow's totem pole. Where do you stand on uh, Jack Loman's pledge to Chief Snow? I think since Jack spoke to it, um, things have become a bit more complicated. And so um, what we find sometimes with repatriation is that there are many different interests with respect to certain objects that we need to be very respectful of and we can't be patronizing about. And so I can't get into the details because it is an act of file, but all to say our intention is to always do the right thing and repatriate appropriately and at this point there are just some details that need to be ironed out for us to know precisely how to proceed so that we are not actually in the traditional patronizing position.